Welcome back folks. Somewhere in the UK, three Brexit geezers built a shuttle out of a car and it worked, kinda. Today I'll show you how to build a space shuttle in KSP without losing your sanity. Damn good deal. The first chapter focuses on the building steps, so skip ahead to this point of the video to watch the mission unfold. The payload bay. Building this contraption can be challenging, so we begin from the crew compartment and the cargo bay. For the next step, I want to place a small lander module in the bay, just behind the cockpit. But why? Well, it's because it resembles the airlock design used in the real shuttle. Next, I build the robotic arm. It has a lot of servos. My design mimics the human arm, but with some quirks. The base of the arm uses two rotation servos. Then the arm has a telescopic piston that extends significantly. I make the elbow with two stacked identical rotation servos to have a 360 degree mobility. Then I place another telescopic piston which is the equivalent of your forearm. To build the wrist I use again a combination of two rotation servos for providing the necessary mobility. And at the end I place this grabbing unit like a hand. If you're still with me after this arm building madness hit that like button. Just look how thin this landing gear looks. It's like the average chicken leg gym, bro. Do you know you're supposed to work out your lower body, too? To lock the arm in its default position, I used an action group that toggles the servo locking system. Now, what am I doing here on the runway? Well, I'm here to test my creation, and I discovered, in fact, that my arm needs a slower transverse rate for the servos or it will shake the entire vehicle apart because it's heavy and carries a lot of inertia. Wings and engines. This part is a little easier because it's something that some of you will already be familiar with. I begin by adding two vector engines at the back of the orbiter. Now later on I added the third one but this is not a big deal, we'll look at it later. I added some stock delta wings because they look perfect, I also put wing panels because they're important, they allow us to build that flat belly shape of the shuttle that provides some degree of lift necessary to glide back on earth safely. Now we add some monopropellant, some oxidizer and fuel tanks on the rear, not just because they are useful, but also because they balance out the mass at the front of the shuttle. The delta wings need to be spaced outwards slightly, and they are kept attached through the wing roots that I'm building with these wing panels. For aesthetic reasons, I built these sides with more wing panels, which was a serious mistake that I will discuss later. I also added these mini triangles to clean up the odd look of the wing roots at the front. For the pitch and roll, I added these control surfaces and a body flap that you can see on the real shuttle as well. I added the landing gear, which this time was spaced out more outwards for better stability when rolling on the runway. The rudder piece is stock, and I place it as far back as possible to keep things flying straight. The RCS thrusters are really important, do not overlook this part, because otherwise you cannot dock with the space station that awaits us in space today. When placing the engine blocks, Ensure that they are spaced at an equal distance from the center of mass so that they are most effective and efficient for maneuvering. Here I'm adding two small orbital engines and these will help with maneuvering in space by changing our velocity. Do not forget air brakes, okay? This game does not have that amazing split rudder design that was found on the real thing, so I used two conventional air brakes for now and try have these as far back as possible because they will give you some passive stability when flying. Inside of the payload bay, I finally add a big docking port to build and connect a self-sufficient crew module, which we'll send to the space station. Finally, we go with a quick paint job with a turret mod to give the shuttle a darker belly, just like the real one, which used ceramic tiles for the protection against the heat of re-entry. Here I put some ESA flag, because hey, I'm European, but too bad we never got our own space shuttle, maybe one day. <laughs> It's time for the re-entry test. Let's check if this is airworthy. So first I teleport it in space and I simulate the re-entry using the cheat debug menu pressing F12. So here are the key steps for making sure that your vehicle is truly airworthy. Here are two key factors at play. What is the center of mass? Take a pen, balance it horizontally above your index finger. That is your center of mass. And it works the same way with a 60 ton space shuttle. 
Now, where is the center of lift? Think of a flat shape, like a triangle or a square, and pretend that's a wing surface. Now, the center of lift is generally located at the geometric center of that polygon. Of course, there's much more to it in real life due to wing camber, angle of attack, sweep angle, and max speed, but for the sake of your sanity, we'll just ignore these today. What really matters is keeping your center of mass always slightly ahead of the center of lift, and never behind it. There is a saying that goes, a nose heavy plane flies poorly, and a tail heavy plane flies once. So I try keep the input of the re-entry onto the ship at a minimum, so I can observe if there are any odd flight behaviors going on. What I discovered through testing was that those pesky vertical wing panels that I use to make that wing root at the front create too much lift and your instability. So I had to switch this later with structural panels. Through this experiment, I'm also quite satisfied with the shuttle behavior because it seems that it can land in a single piece if nothing else goes unexpectedly. Now we're going to land into the ocean because I forgot to check the map. Let's just hope these poor kerbals can swim. Alright, we've built a pretty airworthy shuttle, but what good is it if we can't get it to space? Time to add more boosters. We start with the central fuel tank, the big orange one, and it powers the liquid engines of the shuttle. This tank gets dropped once we reach space. And now for the boosters. These are two large solid rocket boosters and they get us off the launch pad and through the denser lower part of the atmosphere. They attach to the sides of the orange tank, not the wings of the shuttle. I've also added these two large engines to improve the stability between the center of mass and the line of the center of thrust. Now this is a similar solution to the one used in the Soviet Energia rocket that flew the Soviet shuttle Buran into space. Okay, it's time to test this thing, so it already looks a bit wobbly, not good, not too promising, it does not look safe. <laughs> Oh no, we have to go fix this or we'll be flying like a jellyfish. What is a rocket without a proper launch pad? SpaceX tried this and ended with a deep crater, so this time I installed modular launch pads, a mod that gives us access to the actual launch pad for the real shuttle. And you may be wondering why it looks so odd, it took me 20 minutes to figure out because there's so many parts to choose from, but reading the descriptions really helped. And at the end I managed to complete the construction of this monstrosity. Essentially, we have this massive rotating structure which holds the shuttle. Before launch, it slowly opens like a door. Like I slowly open the fridge door when it's me and the boys at 2am looking for beans. In caveman terms, if the big door opens, the fat rocket plane goes zoom upwards. Okay, so it's time for some minor wing adjustment and improvements. Let's see, we need to remove here the front triangles because I think they look a bit odd. We can do better than this. It's just the appearance of it, honestly. Here I replaced some wing panels at the belly because I needed to completely change the shape of the front. As you can see, I was stacking some wing shapes and I reconstructed completely the structure with some different polygons that make the whole appearance of it a bit more smooth and the transition look less awkward. Of course, a final touch, I had to repaint the belly black again to make sure it's cohesive with the rest of the design because the real design had a dark belly underneath. Now it's time to take this beauty for a spin. It's time for the blast off into space. I opened the rotating service structure with an action group so that it gets out of the way. With the key 4, I activate the little flames on the launch pad and then engines ignite. We have takeoff. I should have throttled back the main engines to about 50% thrust to let the boosters do most of the lifting initially. This would have saved us fuel for later, because even in space, efficiency matters. Next time, we have the rollover maneuver. This is a 180 degree roll, which believe it or not, was also done in the real shuttle because it makes it easier to pitch your nose down to the horizon at the heading where you want to travel downrange. This is also done because it's more comfortable for the passengers than if the ship just did a negative pitch down maneuver. Now there's a rule of thumb for beginners, if you're flying between 10 to 15 kilometers of altitude, your ideal angle of climb should be 45 degrees. Ideally, when doing this, you should not be forcing the maneuver, but rather let the gravity rotate the rocket naturally, and this would avoid you wasting some energy. 
So to ensure that your rocket naturally flies correctly through this crucial stage, aim for a thrust weight ratio of 1.2 or 2. At 20 km of altitude, you should throttle the engines back to full power as there is less drag slowing you down and your nose should be pointing at about 25 degrees above the horizon. Now why is the shuttle shrouded in this glow of superheated air? A more efficient flight profile might generally not produce visible heating, if that makes sense. But today we have a wide fuel margin, so it's not something to worry about, unless we explode. At about 30 degrees, our SRBs run out of fuel and we have a separation. That sounded like an explosion. <laughs> Look at that engine, it just detached completely. It was not supposed to happen. That was a violent separation. <laughs> we lost an engine, but I still think we can make it to space. Now watch carefully, when our apogee, which is the highest point of the trajectory, is pushed above the edge of the atmosphere, I orient the shuttle horizontal and I execute the circularization burn, which places us in a safe parking orbit. I separate the orange fuel tank, which in real life happened at this stage a bit earlier maybe, and the astronauts would take pictures of it to inspect for damage or any anomalies. Okay lads, we have to catch up with the space station because it's in front of us. In space things work counterintuitively, so how do we overtake our target? By slowing down, yes, you heard that right. We use the orbital engines to cut a few meters per second of speed, causing our orbit perigee to drop. Just not too low or throw us into the atmosphere and we'll burn like a crispy slice of bacon. Our orbit is a bit shorter and because of Kepler's third law of planetary motion, we know that the orbital time to complete our orbit is shorter with a shorter orbit. So after some time we catch up with the space station. I use the RCS to modulate my speed until I get a close encounter with a very little speed difference between it. I open the cargo bay and I unfold the arm. This takes a bit because there's 8 servos who manually operate and to avoid wobbles they should ideally move slowly. I undock now the cargo module with the arm I gently grabbed it from floating away and now I'm holding it in space, in place. I want to dock the module with the space station, so I need to maneuver the robotic arm, and the two ports should be aligned facing each other. To be honest, I, the docking took me quite a while, because there was some wobbliness. I had to keep the arm retracted to shift my center of gravity the least amount possible, so that my RCS could function almost in their intended configuration. It was hard, but not impossible, especially thanks to the camera mod, that helped me a lot. Once docked, the structure was wobbly, the Kraken didn't pay a visit, but to fix it, I had to disable the reaction wheels. And uh, yeah, that's my only suggestion to fix it. Let's send our astronaut on a spacewalk adventure to show him outside. I think something is wrong with this spacesuit texture. I'm not sure if it's a bugged up mod. Just let me know guys if you know a solution. I would really appreciate that in the comments. Now let's hope there's some snacks for our astronauts to eat in space. First person view is amazingly immersive. This is thanks to the IVA mod. You can just operate levers and switches and doors. It's just great. But we have to go back to business. It's time to return home already. The astronauts deserve to go on holiday and take a break. I fold the robotic arm back into its stowed position and I click the number key 8 which I have assigned for auto struts, so it ensures that no joints are going to wobble around freely. The next step is of course closing the cargo bay doors and a special moment happens. We are underneath a solar eclipse. Just look at this huge shadow of the moon. I just love this game and it makes sense why it's still rocking 12 years after its release. These small things make it feel so special to me. But now we have to do a bit, so I make a brief retrograde burn meaning I'm facing backwards when firing my engine so that I slow down. Eventually, I will drop down into the atmosphere, but first, I say a goodbye to the space station with a flyby. In re-entry, I keep my nose pointed, always upwards, in this process because it helps to dissipate the heat more evenly across a wider surface. We also gain some lift from this angle of attack. Now, you should pay lots of attention during this phase of flight. If you drop too quickly out of your optimal re-entry path, you could burn and explode due to the excessive forces of the aerodynamics and the heat as well. This is something the real space shuttle was also dealing with, but it was much harder, because now we're flying at Mach 6 7 in the game, but in reality they flew at Mach 25 to 30, so there was a much smaller, slimmer room for mistakes. 
So it really gives you a perspective on how crazy this whole program was. Here, I'm doing something that did not happen in the real shuttle. I'm overshooting the runway. To slow quickly, I do that infamous Jebediah maneuver. It's a maneuver that some veterans will know, and it takes every precaution I taught you now and it throws it in the trash. I roll 180 until I'm inverted. Then I pull on the cloche and I point the nose down into the ground. We're slowing rapidly and losing lots of altitude, which is what we need to prevent an overshooting. Now, why was this not ever done? Well, it's because you probably destroy the craft and kill everyone on board. Pretty straightforward. Now, our distance to the runway is still significant, so it's important to pull out from a dive as quickly as possible without stressing the frame or you might lose a wing, and it did happen to me a couple of times. Once flying leveled, try to slow down to keep your speed on the low end of things, so with a very slight descent angle. It's generally where the optimal glide ratio of most planes is found. Just make sure you don't stall out, because then it's game over. Now, this is because the slower you fly, the less drag you fight against, so you get better mileage, in a sense. To burn away the final excess speed, I activate the air brakes, just like the real thing, and I find myself a little high, more high than I wanted to be here. So I go with a steep approach, and make sure I'm still aligned with the center line of the runway, like a traditional aircraft would. Before touching down, I pull back the stick, and I try to flare this, that's even a thing with such a chunky bird like this. And here we go, a butter smooth landing and touchdown. Well done, Kerbos. Welcome back. It's time for a well-deserved vacation. Just kidding. Tomorrow, it's moon training. This is a full-time, full-time job. But thanks for hanging out. I hope you had fun and learned something new about building and flying space shuttles with robotic arms. Now go build your own and comment down below how that went for you. Peace out. See you soon.